Five mistakes brands make in social media. Now this is thoughtful. Hello, I'm Clement Tsang in Shanghai. Savvy advertisers in China have realized social media should be a key part of the marketing campaign. But that doesn't mean many of them aren't still making rookie mistakes, including omitting a call to action or not offering motivation to act, and creating social media campaigns in a vacuum that fail to involve their other marketing activities. A solid social media strategy is like firewood, but too often advertisers treat it like kindling, according to our guest on Thoughtful China Today. Simon Young is a principal for global relations at Sci Engage, a social media agency dedicated to helping New Zealand brands connect with Chinese consumers online. Simon, welcome to our studio today. You've identified five mistakes that are commonly made by marketers uh, in China today. Why don't we walk through a few of them and you can tell us you know, what's your sure. observation? Um, and these are pretty much, these are global as well. Um, I'd say the first one is trying to reach everyone at once, uh, having a target audience of the general public, um, which of course is the hardest thing to do. Uh, it's, it's really hard to, to do something that will appeal to everyone. It's much easier to do something that will appeal to Clement, if I know you. Uh, and I think that's the real challenge of, uh, we have these masses of data available to us, but I think a lot of people just focus on the big and not the data. Uh, and so actually, creating really intriguing personal experiences is the biggest challenge for marketers. Um, the, the second area, um, I think, is just relying on, on paid advertising instead of trying to build that organic movement. Uh, and perhaps this has a lot to do with marketers being um, just incentivized for the short term. They're all about the next month or the next quarter instead of trying to build a really long brand that people actually love. Um, so one of my favorite brands in the whole world, it's not really a, a known as a business, but it's, um, it's Star Trek. You know, pe people will create episodes of Star Trek using their own money and spending years on creating this authentic looking replica um, just because they love it so much. You know, that to me is a really high benchmark for, you know, do you have a brand that people actually love? So you've just talked about how brand lovers will self-motivate themselves to create content because they're really passionate about um, their em emotional connection with the brand. How about brands though? How do they then motivate the consumers? Yeah, well this is, this is often I think brands don't actually know what they're about. Um, that they, they tend to rely on uh, you know, something that is an external motivation. Uh, the classic thing is win an iPad. You know, the, 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 the put thing you put in the sweepstakes is um, enter the draw and win an iPad um, because it's a, it's a nice and desirable thing. Um, I'm from New Zealand, so a lot of New Zealand companies, the prize is a trip to New Zealand. At least that has some vague connection with the products, but um, it's still not really getting to that core. Um, so I think it does take a bit of courage. Um, it takes a bit of, um, I guess, visionary and leadership thinking about what, what is it that we're about beyond just our product that we sell? What is the difference that we're trying to make in the world? I think that's also partly to be um, frank. It's about the organizational readiness, about how they're structured and how they're perceiving marketing. Is it about product marketing? So a lot of the time FMCG is about, here's our product and wow, this new shaver can do this extra additional function and not about integrated marketing communications, which is more about listening to the consumer, delivering what they would like, uh, and then continually updating that message to, to match that appeal. Yeah. So in terms of organizational silos, do you think it's a breakdown between sales and marketing functions or direct response and, and brand engagement? Absolutely, I think si uh, silos would be one of those five mistakes. Uh, and, and in fact, um, not, not only sales and marketing, but also product development. Um, if you think from the customer's point of view, who do you most often want to talk to? It's actually the guys who are making the product. Um, it, it, you know, this is true for services as well as products. Uh, when I'm getting on social media as, a, as an ordinary user, I often have some feedback about, you know, positive or negative about, hey, it would be really good if, and I just hope somebody's listening. And if that person who's listening is marketing focused, I've, I've wasted my effort as a, as a, as a netizen. So how about uh, cool widgets and cool tech um, being a plank of some type of social or digital strategy? Yeah, I think that's is really tempting to put the cart before the horse. Um, uh, so Forrester Research created a, a, a sort of an acronym for developing a social strategy quite some years ago, um, the POST methodology. Um, people, 
uh, objectives, strategy and, tech, uh, and technology um, and often we just do that completely in reverse. That there's some technology that um, our competitors are using or that we've heard of or a vendor is trying to sell to us and we think we, we must get on this. We've actually, you know, we, we've, we can't be left behind without really going through what is, what problem is it solving? Uh, and I think this is where um, our, our marketing industry is getting more entrepreneurial. We're having to think instead like um, creators of products instead of pushes of existing products. Um, so there's the famous milkshake story from the, the innovator's dilemma where they observed what were people getting milkshakes for? One were getting them to feed their kids and feeling guilty about it. One were getting them for breakfast uh, on the way to work and still you know, wasn't satisfactory to them. So that actually helped them create two profitable new product lines. Uh, that's not what we think of as marketing thinking, but it's sort of where we need to go today. But it does take a lot of internal work inside the company. I mean, a lot of really doing social media strategy well tends to be inside work. So who do you think is doing it well and who's not doing it well? And do you think that's a reflection of both the market development uh, or in terms of the consumer loyalty in that market development? So if I were to say the Chinese, they have only been fake focused on retail and brands for 15, 20 years, yeah. which gives them more agility to adapt uh, both their businesses and to communications channels versus a mature country like Australia or Europe where it's much more slower, the silos are already there, yes. uh, the culture has already been fixed and it's very difficult to adapt. Yeah, it's interesting. So yeah, I'd say in a lot of ways uh, the Chinese market is ahead of the curve. Speaking with O2O, um, it's not a phrase that you really hear outside of China uh, and yet it just, when I first heard it, it makes sense. Uh, just again, from the point of view of a, an ordinary social media user, it makes sense. You, you, you make connections, you want to see that happen in, in the real world. Um, on the other hand, uh, some industries like automotive are still very much in broadcast mode. Um, so uh, just on internal flights, every single movie starts with about five car ads. They're all kind of the same. You could swap out the brands and still not tell any different. So as a user, I'm not feeling particularly engaged. Um, just you know, titillated, kind of excited about some, some message, but not really involved in the whole process. Um, and yeah, as you say, some of the mature countries, they do have the well-established silos. There, there is a sort of um, rigidity that's set in. Um, and all of these problems, I think, get, get worse the bigger the company is. Um, so multinationals within China, I think, really struggle um, because there may be frontline people here who have fantastic ideas, who have the real connection with the marketplace. They've got to spend their energy putting that message back through the organisation to convince people this is really needed. And I think that's, that can be you know, a, a real incentive for up and coming small players to be agile. You know, small is beautiful, it's small as the new big. Let's take a break to hear from our sponsor, then we'll be back to hear more from Simon Young. What I think is great about Thoughtful China is it takes a market that is as complex, as dynamic and as ever-changing as China and it helps put things in context. Great speakers, great topics, great debates that help people learn, understand, and get a point of view on China that they might not have from other sources. Welcome back. So why don't you give us an example of you know, a client that has used one or made five of these mistakes? We had a number of sports brands uh, you know, reaching out. Uh, I think they were guilty of trying to reach everyone, being all things to all people, which you know, given it's the biggest sports event of all time is a fair enough assumption. Um, I think KLM is a really good example of a turnaround. They started off with something that was uh, not so good. Um, they, they said, you know, adios amigos when uh, the Mexican team lost. And then you know, a famous Mexican actor on Twitter said, you know, if you, I'm, I'm not flying you guys again. Um, and that was quite a, uh, you know, um, a bad brand moment, but they really handled it well. And so often, you know, often these things are not fatal unless they're chronic. You know, this was kind of a, a, a really acute moment when, when something happened. Um, so they were actually able to turn that around. And I think that gave them a bit more insight into who they're actually talking about. So that they did a follow-up blog post. The answer was also in Spanish. So they could specifically talk to that audience. Uh, and I think, again, for global brands, this is really hard. They're, they are more and more being forced into being all things to all people. 
Um, getting really local, um, this is not so recent, but there's a, a, a New Zealand product called 42 Below Vodka. Uh, when they launched in, uh, in the China market, in fact, wherever they launch, uh, they make sure that it's really, really authentic. Um, so they spend a lot of time to actually um, create experiences that are um, very shareable. And I think this is the real secret of social media. It's not so much what the brand says to the client or the customer, it's what the customers say to each other. That's the more important story of the two. Um, so even though that's not, not such a recent one, um, it's the kind of thing that shows off uh, what social media can do. Not only that it's, uh, it's really successful among its target audience, but that nobody else knows anything about it. Um, we did a similar one to this, uh, nobody in China will have seen this because it was on Facebook, um, targeted at a, an ethnic minority in New Zealand, um, uh, so people that are traditionally hard to reach on TV, radio, traditional media. So instead of just doing an online thing to, to try and same method, different channel, um, we co-created with them. We, we got nine, we call them tribal leaders, uh, got them to create their own uh, video. Uh, and, and because it was nine of them and not just one, it was a competition. There was you know, a sense of friendly but pretty fierce competition going on. And um, there were nine different messages that people could really find which one they chose. Um, and through that, we ended up reaching 25% you know, of the, the target population, uh, which in a small population is, okay, it's, it's pretty easy, but um, still th there was such a level of engagement that um, you know, we've learned a lot from that. Uh, I think that's, that's where I see the future of uh, social going. So what would be the advice that you have today for a CMO uh, in trying to prepare their business and their own team to really leverage this uh, important resource? So I think first is to really know your customer qualitatively. Um, not a, you know, do the numbers, uh, get the market research, but also walk in their shoes. Um, just spend some time uh, physically talking to customers or chatting online, um, as sort of in disguise, because then you really get to, to feel the experience. Um, so when you get social listening reports, don't just look at the graphs and charts, uh, dive into what people are actually saying, um, and then be, be aware that this is not going to be easy to get the whole organization working together, um, but realize that that's the most important thing. Uh, you know, getting your different departments working together and getting your different agencies. Uh, we once worked with a, a, a fantastic CMO who was very visionary, very entrepreneurial, but she brought together a lot of suppliers that just, they were so aware of the competitive forces between them that it was just, that actually needed a real strong process. So I think some, some, some of the areas of, um, uh, I guess borrowing from the areas of diplomacy needs to come into business these days because when, we're never just doing anything as a sort of single entity. It's always a, um, a group of people coming together for a specific purpose and that takes energy. So once the CMO's ready and functioning, please remind us what are those five key points that they should be aware of? Sure. Okay, so uh, number one is uh, trying to reach everybody. Uh, number two is depending on extrinsic motivation. Number three, uh, depending on paid advertising. Uh, number four is letting organizational silos spoil the experience. And finally, uh, putting technology in front of customer experience. Simon, thanks for being in our studio today. Thanks very much. That wraps it up for today. Be sure to subscribe to us on Yoku, Tudo, and YouTube. You can also follow us on Weibo, WeChat, and Twitter, and join our LinkedIn group. See you again.